I'm sure many of you here today are afraid of spiders, as I'm sure many of you here today are afraid of snakes. But what about sharks? I'm sure many of you here today have a fear of sharks as well. Due to popular movies like Jaws and The Shallows, a fear of sharks has been placed in the minds of many due to the believed aggressive nature of these creatures. But is this really the case? Are sharks really evil creatures? Are they really as aggressive as people describe them? I believe this is not a case, and I believe that sharks are really a misunderstood creature that are important to the underwater ecosystems. Unfortunately, sharks have fallen victim to the man-hungry stereotype society has placed on them. Any time a shark attack occurs, it is glorified by the media, which just furthers the fear of sharks as a whole. But really think about it. How many shark attacks occur in a year? Well, according to the Florida Museum International Shark Attack file, in the year 2019, there were a total of 141 confirmed shark attacks, with 41 being provoked. Now this may sound like a lot, but when you make the comparison, you'll find this is actually a very small amount. In fact, one is more likely to be struck by lightning than to be attacked by a shark. It is estimated that 1,000 people are struck by lightning each year. Now let's compare that to car accidents. Organizations such as the NHTSA estimate that 1.3 million people are killed in car accidents each year, with an average of 3,300 deaths per day. Sharks are not a small group of fish. There are over 500 species of sharks split across 12 different orders. Across all of these species, only a few of them are ever responsible for attack on humans. In fact, only about five or six are ever responsible for these attacks. Even then, only three shark species are considered aggressive by nature, those being the great white shark, the tiger shark, and the bull shark. Even then, people still believe that these sharks are nothing but mindless killing machines hell-bent on tearing people apart. Most shark attacks occur when the shark is provoked, when it's bothered or attacked by someone. Shark attacks that are unprovoked are usually attacks on surfers who, right before standing up to ride away, cast a shadow with the board and their arms and their legs that imitates the shape of a seal, which is a shark's prey. So the sharks don't necessarily mean to attack the people, more so they confuse the people for their favorite food. But what about the shark's lives? Humans seem to complain whenever a shark kills someone, but no one seems to bat an eye whenever a shark kills a human. In fact, 100 million sharks are killed a year by humans. It is estimated by many scientists that overfishing has reduced the number of large predatory fish by 90% over the past 50 to 100 years. Sharks now represent the largest group of threatened species on the IUCN Red List of Threatened Species. Despite this, only three shark species are protected from the dangers of international trade, those being the great white shark, whale shark, and the basking shark. Over the 500 species, only three are protected. The rest are just seen as low priority or are just forgotten about. But what should it matter whether they live or not? Well, it matters because sharks are a vital part of the underwater ecosystems, especially coral reefs. You see, in the recent documentary, Our Planet, on Netflix, they delved into the importance of sharks on coral reefs. Since sharks are at the top of the ecosystems, they feast on the smaller fish, thus being a sort of population control for the other creatures on the reef take the sharks out and the population begins to grow and the ecosystem crumbles. Sharks also act as a sort of health indicator for other fish by eating the sick or dying fish that would infect the rest of the reef. For example, by removing the sharks, large predatory fish such as groupers begin to feast on their prey until neither is left alive, thus leading to the spread of macroalgae, which consumes the corals 
and then eventually the reef crumbles. This population control and this power that sharks have also has an effect on the economy. A study in North Carolina showed that the decrease of shark populations led to an increase of ray populations. The increase of ray populations led to a decrease in the number of bay scallops as they were all consumed by the stingrays. Without any bay scallops left, the stingrays had to move on to other bivalves. In this case, they moved on to the quahog, which is a clam-like mollusk and a key ingredient in clam chowder. Without any quahogs left, many restaurants had to remove this American classic from their menus. This not only shows that the decrease of sharks can have an impact on the ecosystems, but it can have an impact on the economy. Even through ecotourism, sharks have become a valuable part of the economy. Through dive tourism, a single reef shark can bring in up to $250,000 over the course of its lifetime. Normally, when sold for consumption, it would only make about $50. Not only is it more valuable to keep them alive, but we'd be losing money if we were to kill them. With the annual arrival of the whale shark in Belize, it is estimated that nearly $2 million can be made from one whale shark. It is more valuable to care for these creatures rather than kill them. This is a worldwide issue, but there are things that we as a community can do to help. First of all, and this should be very easy for everyone to understand, do not purchase or consume items containing shark fin. It should never be acceptable to consume sharks, especially considering the threat they face. This isn't just limited to shark fin. This also includes shark cartilage and shark oils, which can be found in a range of items, such as beauty items and health nutrition. By boycotting shark products and products that put sharks at risk, we can reduce market demand and thus help these creatures. On the same note, we need to limit seafood consumption. Commercial fishing not only has a negative impact on the shark's food, but it has a negative impact on sharks. Sharks themselves are a byproduct of commercial fishing and are thus targeted by commercial fishermen. Secondly, Always use sustainable alternatives and substitutes. Many places have opted to stop using plastic straws and plastic products, and this is a good step towards this goal. Finally, stay current through social media and learn what you can do to help protect these creatures. Tell your family and friends what they can do and get them to protect them as well. Learn what activities put the shark at risk. So as you can see, not only are sharks not as aggressive as they seem, they're also vital to the ocean's ecosystems. In a way, we've already made great strides towards this goal, as the restrictions set in place by the coronavirus have given the environment a sort of break. In the first few months alone, carbon emissions have dropped dramatically, and, as I'm sure everyone is aware, seafood consumption has also dropped dramatically. Now would also be a good time to start reading up on the topic and doing some research as we all have this time off. But while we have been improving, we have to make sure that this continues. Once this is all over, we cannot go back to how we were. Everyone needs to do what they can and get everyone involved. Do as much as you can to help save our sharks.